Good morning and welcome to Know with United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Kalesita Uluave to Ifua. We're so glad you're joining us today for our online worship on this second Sunday of July, the 12th, 2020. We're going to have a time of worship shortly. Thanks for Meleakolotu will be our liturgist. Darlene Anderson is sharing our children moment and also reading our scripture. And thank you, Colleen, for the special music. She'll be singing Amazing Grace. As we prepare to worship the Lord, let us reflect on Psalm 100. Enter his gate with thanksgiving. Enter his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord and his love endures forever. Yes, his faithfulness continues through all generation. So let us prepare our mind, our heart, our spirit to worship God. For God is good. Amen. Church, um, please join me in the call to worship. For the gift of loving family, we give you thanks, O Lord. For the grace of gathered community, we give you thanks, O Lord. We give you thanks for the journey of the following Jesus. Give us courage, O Lord. For the daily work of compassion, Lord, Lord send, send your, your spirit, spirit to guide, guide us. us. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Love Divine. All love excelling.
join me in the opening prayer. God of peace, we are people gathered in expectation, fearful, anxious, curious, and excited. Come into our midst, calm our restless hearts, and help us hear your call to go into the world. Help us remember your saving words, your words of good news, and your words of restoration for us and for the world. May your peaceful presence make us a forgiven and forgiving people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. God of seed and soil, of hearts and lives, we confess to you that the lures of this world have a chokehold on us. You shower us with true goodness, and yet we cannot take the hold of joy that you intend for us. Hear us now as we call you. Hear us now as we name that which threatens our growth in faith. Break open, we pray, the rocky soil of our hearts. There is, therefore, now no con condemnation for you who are in Christ Jesus. God's word will bear fruit in our lives on this day and eternally. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. everyone is doing well. Uh, I was thinking about this morning uh, a scripture that I remember about the, the parable of the sower that a, my woman who could, took care of me when I was a little girl would always tell me she'd read the Bible to me every day and one of my favorite stories was this parable and it's about the sower who goes out to plant the seed of the kingdom and he's looking for good soil and some, sometimes there's good soil and things grow and sometimes there aren't and then it reminded me that what we think is kind of what we sow in our little garden. And so it reminded me of a poem by Catherine Merrill that's called The Heart is a Garden. The heart is a garden where thought flowers grow. The thoughts that we think are the seeds that we sow. We must watch what we think each moment all day and pull out those weed thoughts and throw them away and plant loving seed thoughts so thick in a row that there won't be room for the weed thoughts to grow. Let's concentrate this week on thinking good thoughts and trying to avoid thinking of those weed thoughts so that we can bring God's kingdom to our own families and to other people. It's trying to do as much good as we can to everyone we can as Wesley taught us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to remember to think always of the kingdom, always of God, what God wants for us, what his message is for us and to live a holy life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Saved a wreck like me. 
The scripture this morning is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives you life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in this realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not live in the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the Spirit who lives in you. Let's add God's blessing to this word. Good morning and thank you so much for this opportunity once again to share the good news with my brothers and sisters and family of Norwood, even though we continue with our online worship, but it's a great way to share the gospel and to pray for each other. As believers, as Christians, the good news this morning from Romans 8, verse 1 to 11, Paul writes to the believers in Rome saying, if you are in Christ, you no longer condemned. There is no condemnation in Christ. What is Paul saying? Paul saying that you no longer bondage and slave to sin for Christ has set you free. The word no condemnation can be defined in the courtroom. When you committed a crime and you accused of that crime and you stand before the judge, and all of a sudden you heard that you found innocent, not guilty, and you may go. There is no condemnation. And that's what Paul is bringing us to an understanding that we are believers who are believe in Christ and trust in him. So when we are in Christ, there is no condemnation. So Paul is saying because he came through the same way of living his life in the past. We all know he persecuted the Christians. He went against God's will. He was the first one that gathered with those who stoned Stephen. That was, that was Saul. And then he changed his name to Paul when he was transformed and called by Jesus. So Paul was saying in chapter 5 and 6 and 7 that I came through life struggling with my sinful nature, a struggle that all of us experience in life. But thanks be to God in Jesus Christ who fulfilled on the cross to die to set us free so we don't have a, the Lord will no longer condemn us. But because we are in Christ, we are no longer condemned. And now we have the opportunity to do good and do no evil and be humble 
and be obedient with the Lord. In chapter 7, if you go back and read, you will see how Paul talks about his life, how he struggles as his old nature and, and his new nature in Christ. And he hates the sin that he committed. But now he is thankful because Christ has set him free from slavery to sin. Now to have life. Now he has the ability to do good all the time because Christ has delivered him. And that's why, and that's the reason why Paul writes in the beginning of his letter saying to the church in Rome, if you are in Christ, if you have transformed and you believe in Jesus Christ, you are no longer contempt. Which means when we come before the judgment day and come before God, Jesus is the judge. And he will say, you go, you may go. I have set you free because I died for you. And because you hear my voice and you follow me and you being obedient and being good and you have done God's will and have a relationship with me, you are free. And that's why Paul is saying, when we are in Christ, there is no condemnation. And the rest of the passage that Paul talks about, what kind of life in the spirit will offer you? But I think as a preacher, as a pastor, I wanted to take the rest of my message to share with you and to remind you the work of the spirit. I want you to know that the spirit come to live and dwell in you. So the spirit in you, even though you struggle with the devil, you struggle with your flesh, you struggle with the world that we live in, with the temptation and the trials and tribulations and all that happening. Remember that the Holy Spirit lives within you. But so often we make excuses, we ignore it, that the spirit lives within us and we moan and we cry and we sh struggle because you don't allow the Holy Spirit to work within you. Remember on the night of Jesus betrayed, he said to his disciples, it's good for me to go back to my father and I'll ask him to bring, to send an advocate. An advocate to accompany you, to live with you, to always there with you. And that advocate will teach you. So the Holy Spirit is not only an advocate to accompany you and to lead you and guide you, but also to teach you the truth. And in the gospel, John says, when you know the truth, it'll set you free. And also the Holy Spirit come not only to teach you, but to remind you the word of God. It's also say that the Holy Spirit is there to comfort you. Yesterday, I joined Connie and her family to celebrate the life of Nicholas Grisafi. It was a nice uh, uh, celebration. There's so many of the family and friends who gather at their home and how they share their memories and how they remember Nick, that Nick is a man of faith who loves his family devoted to his children and his wife and also a man of God. So it wasn't a sad time, but it was a celebration and everybody enjoyed and shared the sweet memories of Nick. And I know many of us remember Nick in his, as his smiling face, soft voice, very open, welcoming and praise everybody and that's Nick, a man who walked with the Holy Spirit, not only during crisis, not only the time that you need, but every moment to know that we depend on the Holy Spirit and we need to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. So often things happen and we say, well, I'm just so lucky. I was at the right time at the right place. No, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that dwell in you 
that always leads you in the right path because that is the purpose of the Holy Spirit to protect you and to encourage you and to empower you. And so often we may not understand when the Holy Spirit prompts you to turn away from things that you insist of your godly, of your earthly mind and your earthly desires, flesh that may want you to do something, but it's the little voice within you that whisper to you and tell you not to. And when you take the time to listen to that voice, and that is the Holy Spirit prompting you, then you'll be safe and you'll be in the right path and you'll be in the right relationship with the Lord and others and you'll be at peace. So Paul is encouraging us and reminding us that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ, which means that you must accept Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, have a relationship with him. And I know many of us already know Christ. Many of us have accepted Jesus Christ. If I ask what day that you received Jesus Christ, many of you will name the date and the time, exactly the moment and what happened. That's great. But Paul wants to remind us there are three enemies of human being here on earth. First is the devil, second is our flesh, and third is the world. The devil is always there, consistently testing us. So we have to be aware. And that's why the work of the Holy Spirit within you to always keep you alert Secondly, the world that we live in, full of choices, and they offered so many things that pleases our eyes and our desires and our taste and our need. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, to remind you the word of God, to teach you what is right, to make a right choice. And thirdly, our flesh, our human flesh, that sometimes lead us into sin and trouble. But that is the blessing of having the Holy Spirit live within us, that we are always aware of what's happening and turn away from sin, committed sin, and do right and what is pleasing to God. So remember, the Holy Spirit, living a life in the Spirit are those who are always in Christ. And when we have Christ in our life and the Holy Spirit lives in you, will direct you. And it's not a daily or weekly walk with the Spirit, but it's a every moment and every second. So when you walk with the Christ and live with Christ and the Spirit will direct you, empower you, protect you, and lead you, you'll make a right choice and you always hear the voice of God and your life will fill with peace, joy, and love. Life in the Spirit, it's a blessing because Jesus died to set us free. So there's no condemnation and we live with hope on the day of judgment, we come before God and Jesus is the judge and will set you free. Believe in him. Make a right choice. Follow Christ. In Christ. Live in Christ. For the Spirit is with you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to pray for um, Connie and her family for the death of Nicholas Risafi. Also keep Wilma and her family in your prayers for the loss of Don Andre and also Beverly. During this pandemic, we lost three beloved husbands of our faithful members, Barry, Griffin, Nicholas Risafi, and Don Andre. And also uh, a lovely, a loving, faithful mother from the Tongan ministry, 
Sela to Holaki. So we hold them in our prayers. We pray for our families and we pray for our congregations uh, that the Holy Spirit will lead us. And as while we are discerning when is right and the best time for us to return to church. This Wednesday, we have a Zoom convers 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 conversation uh, in regard of uh, our preparation uh, for return. Uh, yet we'll remain at home for the month of July and also August. But we wanted to start having a conversation. So Ralph Croy and the trustee committee, as well as uh, the music and worship committee under the leadership of Beverly, uh, invite you to join us uh, to form a COVID-19 preparation team. And this is our very first conversation. If you have any ideas, please do share with us, okay? and continue to pray for the world, hospitals, nurses, doctors, firemen. I know this is summer. Um, keep our firemen and our community safe in your prayers. Uh, let, us, let us pray. Let us prepare for pastor prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of heaven and earth, you are our creator who call each and every one of us as your beloved child. We bow our head and give thanks to you, O oh God, for the blessing of life. Even though we are worshiping from different locations, but we are worshiping in one God, a living God who loves us so much that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross so we are no longer contempt before you, O God. We ask for forgiveness as we repent and return to you, O Christ, and receive him as our Lord and our Savior. O Lord, we come before you and give thanks for the blessing of life that we share. O Lord, we thank you for those who celebrate their birthday, especially the twins, Laura and Alicia Rathbone. We thank you for their ministry. Bless them so they continue to be a blessing to our homeless community. We pray for Dan and all those staff at North Valley Caring Services as they continue to be your disciples and sharing and helping and supporting our homeless community here, O oh Lord. Give them strength and protect them from the virus and give them courage. O oh Lord, we pray for our church members, for those who are ill and sick and as you touch them with your healing hands. We pray, O oh God, for those who lost their loved one, especially Connie and her family for the loss of Nick Krisafi. O oh Lord, we pray for Beverly as she moaned and still grieved for the loss of her beloved husband, Barry. We pray for Wilma and her family for the loss of her husband, Don. They are faithful members of our congregation, and yes, we truly miss them, but we know, O oh God, you have called them into eternity. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who got affected by this virus, that you touch them and heal, comfort, and give them strength, complete, and restore them, O oh God. O oh Lord, we pray for the professional health workers, essential workers, nurses, doctors, EMTs, and all those who help treat those who are sick. We pray, O oh God, for safety and protect them, be with their family in this time of worry and fear. O oh Lord, we pray for our congregations and all the families of the English and the Tongan ministry to be courageous and be strong, to be patient and discern your will, O oh God, in the midst of all this. And we pray that we discern, O oh God, what is right and when is the right time that together we are able to come and worship in our sanctuary. At the meantime, we pray that you forever presence in our midst, direct us and empower and protect us from all that happening in our world especially the temptations, the trials, and all those who try to remove us away from our faith. Let us hold on to you and trust in God and trust in Jesus. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for our official leaders, our government uh, leaders, O oh God, our city and our, our state, as well as our president of this nation that they seek your godly wisdom and they come to you 
and discerned the call of your Holy Spirit that dwell in our midst. Let us take every moment to walk with you and to be obedient and depend on you, O God. Without you, we may not do nothing, for we are the branches and you are the vine. And if we do not connect to you, O God, we cannot do anything here on earth. Remind us that we fully repeat, repent, are dependent on you, O God, in all the things that we do. Hear our prayers, O God, as we surrender our lives as a living sacrifice. For you are our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For dime is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So now we come to the end of our service with our closing hymn and benediction. Let us come together for our benediction. Let us ask ourselves, what does the Lord require of us? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord. So go now, wherever you are. Live a life in the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit lives in you. So you must walk with the Lord every moment so you know Jesus Christ and you can hear the guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you, to empower you and protect you. So be faithful because you have adopted into the family of God. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.